Hey friends, welcome to Onlet Recorder. You might have known OpenAI's GPT-3 by its uh, hype that, that, that it's getting in every media or probably Twitter on any social media that you are looking at. But that is uh, usually trained on a very huge data set and then it's uh, just the API that you get to see. So you don't get necessarily play um, a lot with that. So here comes Min GPT, which is put together by Andrej Karpati, who doesn't need any introduction. But if you want to know a little bit about him, so he is currently uh, heading uh, AI self-driving uh, Tesla and he is also very popular in uh, AI research community. So basically what is GPT, I mean GPT is, it's a PyTorch uh, re-implementation of uh, the GPT, the original GPT training, you can have a look at it. So as he mentions, Min GPT tries to be small, clean, interpretable, educational because uh, it's just basically 300 lines of code. So we are not going to have a look at uh, what is inside the code. So what we are going to look at in this particular video is, so this is a library kind of a package. Um, so how you can use this package uh, to let's say train um, a text generation model um, using min gpt so andrej kapati has been very kind enough to put together a jupyter notebook but so so what i've simply done is i've taken this jupyter notebook and then put it on a collab and um, also few things that uh, might uh, you know you might face a little bit of difficulty so basically this is how uh, you you would use it so you have a training data set this data set and then you're going to just uh, create the gpt model and then you're going to train it and then finally you're going to use uh, your test data set against it which is going to um, with which you're going to build a, a sequence model so there are few things that you can read here and then understand how it is different but basically you're building a mini version of open gpt open ai is gpt3 so it's very much like a mini version but not necessarily it would give you the same result so uh, in fact for that matter um, what we are going to do in this text uh, in in this exercise is we are going to build uh, build a uh, text generation model that would actually give you the next text uh, character uh, that that uh, using Shakespeare's uh, file. So you could see that uh, it actually has thrown out gibberish. So it has thrown out gibberish particularly because I, I had only three epoch, which is definitely not uh, enough. But you know, I don't also want to spend my entire time, you know, training this model, which is something I don't want to look at my collab all the time. So that is why I've given only three epochs. So if you're watching this tutorial, if you're going to use this particular um, collab notebook, so you would want to probably make this epoch 200 or something so that uh, you actually get a sensible output. So let's leave that out and then we'll start with that. So first you have to go simply and then create a new notebook. So once you create a new notebook, so you can see that we are basically going to copy this and paste. Okay. So um, once you create a new notebook, uh, you have to do git uh, clone because now you want um, the entire file folder structure to come inside uh, your Google Collab. So git clone and then get this get this particular stuff inside your Collab. So um, once you run git clone, so it's going to just replace everything. So it's going to put everything together. And once you do that thing, so you can actually see. Um, so because I've already got um, uh, min GPT inside, so it has put another min GPT inside. For you, it will be in the root folder. So when you check it by default, uh, so it's going to just say content. So what you have to do as the next step, you have to say CD min GPT for you to enter into that particular directory. So currently I'm inside min GPT, so I don't have, I'm not going to do that. But basically once you clone it, so you're going to have a folder of min GPT and you want to enter inside that folder from content. And that's where you're going to say CD min GPT. At this point, you can again check with PWD. So you're going to see that content min GPT. So if you have any difficulty at this particular step, um, comment on the YouTube comment so I would be able to help you. So the next thing is basic logging that he has set up. So you can see the basic logging. And then next you want to um, reproduce it. So you set a seed and then you import the libraries which is oh um before all of these things i'm sorry so before all of these things please uh, ensure that your notebook runtime is a gpu so if you have not done this step if you do it again so it's going to repeat everything all together so if you have not done this step please uh, when you open your google collab notebook new notebook so it's going to be none initially you have to select gpu so that you are able to do all these things uh, I'm not sure whether it would execute on CPU, but um, it takes like a lot of time on GPU itself. So you better um, make it GPU and then you would be able to run it. So import the libraries basically for 
uh, numpy and uh, pytorch libraries so the first thing is uh, he's actually creating a character set a uh, class that would uh, basically you know uh, going to read all the characters that we are going to see from this text so block size is 128 and the text that uh, uh, in this particular uh, tutorial that he has used is from his uh, tiny shakespeare uh, text uh, which also you can download from his github repository which is what this particular cell is going to do so this cell is going to tell you that um, w get uh, so it's going to download this entire text and put it inside your current folder so as you can see it is inside your current folder and it doesn't take a lot of time so it's you can simply just download it once you do that thing you can actually open it uh, you're opening the text and then you're using this ca card data set uh, the class that uh, that's been created here so you're basically using that and reading it once you read it it's going to give you the basic uh, information about how many characters you have got and uh, how many unique uh, uh, vocabulary size that you have got here as you can see so once you are done with these things now you are actually initializing uh, the gpt initializing gpt3 uh, sorry not gpt3 i'm sorry initializing the gpt uh, configuration that he has given like the model so um, uh, very very similar to how you actually do with any uh, deep learning model so you have the training data side with its vocabulary size the block size the number of layers uh, and then you are initializing it at this point you have initialized with the number of parameters you can see that has been given here so now uh, when you are actually going to train the model uh, it is highly likely that you might hit a memory error highly likely so you might hit a um, memory error saying that coda has run out of memory cuda coda has run out of memory so if you uh, hit that error so basically what you can do is if your block size is like 512 and if you hit that error first time you can change it to 256 and try it if you still do not have any luck what you can simply do is you can do a garbage collection so uh, import gc and then do a garbage collection so at this point you'd be fine and now now is the main thing where you're going to actually train that gpt model so your train is so like i mentioned i'm going ahead with a very minimum epoch that i can do so this is going to just simply throw gibberish uh, it's not going to sh show you anything useful but i want to just show you this um, uh, tutorial so that you can actually play around with that at your own time so um, please do not uh, uh, think that this model is not performing or uh, this uh, this min gpt library is not performing well so it's definitely a good library and you can actually see that how it has played out very well for ant h kapati uh, but the my point is i'm going ahead with a very small amount of epoch so it's going to definitely throw you only gibberish so if you run it it's going to run all those things so while it is running you can actually see when you give a, a particular text what is how the output looks like when you give a particular text uh, so the context so it is uh, on a gpt3 uh, con uh, context uh, it is usually called a prompt so you would have seen the word prompt everywhere in gpt3 so what gpt3 does is you give or gpt3 or any other uh, language generation model does is you give a prompt uh, you give a bunch of text so the model is going to predict what is going to come next to it so and it uh, it basically says like how many characters you want to do and it's a character level so people uh, also do string level uh, i mean sorry word level so but this is a uh, character level so you can actually see uh, how many characters you want and uh, basic parameters that you would like to use and then finally you just combine all the text and then you present it um, here so i'm i'm not going to let it run uh, you can see that uh, it has run so I'll probably stop it and then uh, we get to just run this and see mm, it has it's still not stopped so you can actually type something like oh god or something and then you can just run it and uh, it would probably give you the output um, which uh, you expect which you which may look like gibberish again you can see uh, cat um, something 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 is there so it is basically not giving you the output uh, that uh, you wanted to actually uh, um, use but uh, the main thing like i said is um, it is going to give you some output uh, which which is kind of you know ensuring that uh, this library is working so you, this library also has another example where uh, you would you would basically teach um, gpt to learn uh, mathematical arithmetic operation for example basically addition 
so for example uh, so what this this thing does is it actually generates a lot of uh, such problems uh, and then uh, it's basically you're giving it inside uh, gpt to say that whenever you see 85 and whenever you see 50 so the output is 135 whenever you see 6 whenever you see 39 then the output is 45 so like that it generates number and then it uh, gives so it's very much like uh, predicting the next number but uh, but again um, it is going to help you so it, it, it is going to look like uh, gpt has learned uh, how to do arithmetic so this is the same technique if you actually see people use to say that okay they're going to write the first part of a javascript code and then it's going to generate the rest of the javascript code so that is that is what basically it is uh, so right now it has generated some uh, gibberish so once again i am so sorry that this is not the expected output of this thing so i did this um, intentionally so that I can show you the demo uh, with a very less epoch so you would have to increase the epoch and uh, this author has actually uh, given everything so you can basically take this thing but you might hit a few roadblock that is the whole point of this video to help you guide you so that you can actually take this code on github and then start you know putting it uh, on your google collab and start experimenting or playing with it so at the end of this process you would have, you would have actually built your custom small mini version of gpt3 uh, again saying it gpt3 is slightly clickbaity so it's nowhere close to gpt3 but you have actually built a model uh, natural uh, nlg natural language generation model that can uh, predict uh, the next uh, character or something like that so um, this is this th there are a lot more implementations so you would have seen a gpt implementation from hugging face you would have seen a lot of different implementation but this is i think uh, one of the most e efficient implementation uh, as you can see it's just 300 lines and um, the api is very simple enough for anyone to just like so someone just like me just simply take it and then start uh, using it so but if you want to see more language model uh, example so you can go here and see hugging face transform uh, language model and then you can see how it works also some of the notes that the author has mentioned so once again uh, thank you so much for Andrej Kapati for his uh, contributions to the deep learning community and then this library is just simply so awesome that uh, you cannot wait to try it out so i hope this video was helpful and uh, you would also get to try this out and then let me know in the comment section how did you feel about uh, uh, building a mini version of gpt3 or at least a lookalike uh, version of gpt3 which is not maybe as efficient as gpt3 but at least yeah you have got something so uh, let's hope that uh, you would be able to build using this simple video and then the examples that karpati has given so Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any comments, let me know in the comment section. Until next video, see you. Take care. Bye.